When I was a young child, we lived in a small town in America called Blackmonton. It was a peaceful autumn day, and the leaves in the valley swayed like colorful flames in the breeze. This small town is located in a valley, surrounded by lush woods, and seems to be isolated from the world. And his story begins from this quiet place. That night, the clock had pointed to 1130, and the small town of Blackmonton was shrouded in the silence of the autumn night, with no one on the streets. The stage of his story is Temple Lane in this small town. This is an uncomfortable old alley with a century-old history. This alley is extremely narrow, only big enough for a small car to pass through, and is lined with ancient buildings on both sides, witnessing countless changes over time. Whether it's day or night, the place is always shrouded in the tranquility of autumn. However, the tranquility of Temple Lane also comes with its dark side. In this alley lived a boy named Tommy, who was only about 10 years old at the time. Although he is innocent and innocent like other children, he often does dishonest things. He likes to steal things and bully children younger than him. However, one of his favorite pranks is to dress up as a scary ghost or monster when autumn nights fall. Both adults and children will be frightened out of their wits by his pranks. The spookiness of this alley and Tommy's mischief make it a shadow in the town. The alley is very narrow, and the small abandoned temple at the end of it makes the place even more eerie. The windows of the small temple are covered with thick autumn dust and cobwebs, and the surroundings are covered with weeds, as if it itself has a mysterious past of autumn. Even during the day, the place always has an eerie autumnal atmosphere. But for him, this is a paradise for his pranks. Whenever autumn nights fell, he would squat in the temple alley and suddenly jump out, startling people, and watch the terror of autumn nights appear on their faces. That sense of satisfaction arose spontaneously, as if he had mastered the source of people's autumn fears. However, one day, Autumn also ushered in incredible changes. That night, he dressed up as a ghost again, but not long after, I hurried back home. Upon entering their home, his family was horrified by his appearance. His eyes almost protruded out of their sockets, his hair stood up like thorns, his face was as pale as the autumn moonlight, and his mouth was wide open, but he couldn't say a word. The family had no choice but to send him to the hospital. Doctors ran a series of tests but couldn't find anything abnormal. Even a mysterious master couldn't find the answer, so he just left sadly. This is what Tommy's family later told us about what happened after Tommy returned home. We were very surprised after hearing this. Although doctors could not provide an explanation, people began to speculate. Perhaps on that autumn night, he met a real evil ghost, a supernatural being. The evil ghost saw him and- That October, we lived in a small town called Blackford in the United States. Autumn has arrived, and every day's work requires us to get up early. Before the sun has fully risen, at around 6 o'clock in the morning, we have gathered beside the railway, preparing to start the day's work. The town is nestled among peaceful valleys, and the autumn scenery is picturesque. The leaves are blowing in the breeze, like a golden rain curtain, adding a quiet and peaceful atmosphere to the town. Everyone was working and chatting. The day was not over yet, but the midday sun had already made us feel exhausted. Time seems to be stretched even longer in this fatigue. So, when we realize that the time to get off work is approaching, we can't wait to get ready to end the day's work. At this moment, a strange silence spread throughout the construction site. Our eyes are drawn to something and cannot be easily ignored. A man walked out of the railway tunnel, carrying a heavy basket on his back, followed closely by a woman holding a boy who looked to be five or six years old. 
What was unusual was that their expressions seemed dull, as if they had not noticed our presence. The man's face was pale and he seemed to be in poor physical condition, but his steps were firm and determined. They walked slowly towards the tracks, undisturbed by our shouts. We tried to warn them that the high-speed train was coming, but they seemed to ignore it. Suddenly, a sharp warning came from the intercom, K1 asterisk gate, approaching. We understood that this meant that the train was not far away, and every worker knew this. But the family of three seemed completely unaware or deliberately ignored it. We shouted anxiously and desperately tried to pull them away from the railway. However, their pace remained steady. The train rumbled forward, its whistle deafening. Our shouts were barely audible over the roar of the train. The train is getting closer and closer, only 10 meters away, 5 meters away. Helplessness and fear fill our hearts, but we are helpless. We didn't dare to look at the terrible scene that was about to happen, so we turned our backs hastily. The high-speed train swept past like a furious wave, and we all knew what happened. We turned around again and saw a horrifying sight. The man standing in the middle of the tracks no longer existed, leaving only his torn limbs. The woman was lying on the sleeper, her head had been crushed by the rail, leaving only a stain of blood and brain matter. The young boy, who was not injured, was hit by the train and flew dozens of meters. His head was crushed and his life was gone. The horror of the scene was almost too much to bear, and some of our colleagues felt extremely uncomfortable as a result, with some of them even falling ill days later. It is difficult for us to understand what kind of tragedy this family of three has experienced. A few days later, news came from the small town that the family of three had committed suicide, and the man left a shocking suicide note before his death. This horrifying incident has been told throughout the town and has become a terrifying legend on our construction site. Although many years have passed, the scene of that autumn morning is still deeply etched in my mind, reappearing in my dreams from time to time, causing sleepless nights. And for that unfortunate family of three, their fate will forever remain one of the most bizarre and horrific stories in this town. I remember that one autumn, I was living in a small town in Texas, USA. I am only eight years old, and I feel very familiar with the tranquility and peace of this small town. Especially early mornings in autumn, the cold wind is always full of unique tranquility, and that day was also an early morning. My father was a hunter with a passion for adventure. He always took me to the wild and taught me survival skills, especially when dealing with wild animals. That autumn morning, we built a simple cabin in the mountains outside the town and planned to spend a cold but fulfilling season. As we all know, autumn is the time when wild animals prepare food, but it is also the season when wolves are on the prowl. This is also the reason why my father chose this location. He wanted to train me in the extreme challenges of this season and make me understand the cruelty of nature. That early morning, I was sleeping soundly when I was suddenly awakened by an unhurried knock on the door. There were knocks on the door, ta-ta-ta-ta, ta-ta-ta-ta, and with every sound, my heartbeat accelerated irregularly. I thought it was a neighbor from out of town and wondered why he was here so early. I was lying on the bed and had no choice but to shout, who is it? This is so early in the morning, disturbing people's sleep. But the knocking on the door did not stop, and the person seemed unable to hear me. Just when I was angry and decided to stand up and open the door, my father grabbed my arm and motioned for me to stay quiet. Our cabin was very simple, with a gap between the door panel and the ground. My father got out of bed, squatted down, and stared out of the door through the gap. 
His face turned livid and his lips trembled slightly. I didn't understand why my father was so scared, but my curiosity grew. While looking out the door, he stopped me with his hand and told me to keep quiet. After a few minutes of nervous waiting, the knocking on the door stopped. However, another burst of sound followed, an angry shout. Then came gunshots, one after another, echoing in the early morning valley. My father held my shoulders tightly and motioned for me to be silent. Only then did I notice two slender, hairy hind legs, like two firewood sticks, under the crack of the door. At that moment, I understood that the knocks at the door were not ordinary visitors, but wild wolves, one after another, who had discovered our cabin and were trying to come in for food. My father and I waited silently, knowing that wolves are extremely cunning hunters. They often go out in groups, which means there is more than one wolf outside the door. I couldn't help but think back to scary stories about wolves, knowing that if they decided to attack, the consequences would be disastrous. Just when I thought the critical moment of life and death was about to come, there was a sharp scream. Then, several gunshots echoed in the valley. My father and I couldn't help but turned our heads suddenly and looked out the door. Outside the door stood a hunter, holding a rifle and accurately shooting a wolf. The wolves howled and fled, leaving our cabin.